What if I tell you it is possible to ride up and shortly after your first water start? What if I tell you there is one single thing that if you understand, you will be much closer to ride upwind, even in light wind. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You exit this video and you believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland and I will show you how deep is the rabbit hole goes. Prepare for a lot of tension. Welcome back on the Epic Gus channel. My name is Zolti and I brought you another epic tutorial. This time about upwind. And you don't have to be the chosen one to succeed. It's gonna reveal the single most important thing in kitesurfing that it's mostly overlooked and it's gonna make your upwind transition and even jumps better. Stay with me. The receipt for upwind is pretty straightforward and simple. You have to get a good speed, you have to start leaning back and ease out the bar. It's just like I would tell you, do a backflip, jump in the air, do a rotation and land. Answer this simple and easy question. How do you create tension on your lines? And I hear you saying, and quite correctly, that I'm gonna pull the bar or I'm gonna move the kite. And both is cool. But is this the only way? Let's imagine we connect a line to a fixed point and you hold the other end. To make that line under tension, it's only you who can do something. So you're gonna tense it or not. And that determines how much tension is on the line. But what if, if we take this to two unfixed points? So let's say you and your friend holding the two ends of the line. What will it change? Is it still enough to pull only one side of the line to create tension? Not exactly as you can see. If the other side not resisting equally, there won't be more tension building up on that line. And that's key here. Let's imagine you're standing on a skateboard and a car is pulling you on a rope. Once you follow this car and you reach the speed of the car, you will slack the line and then the car will actually still pull you and then you will have this kind of yank. But what if, if you direct your movement, your actual momentum slightly against the pulling force, you start to create tension. Time to think about it, what you can do with your momentum and with your direction, with your board. Eventually, riding upwind is pulling your kite with your existing momentum, the direction you wanted to go. Leaning back is essential to have tension, but you might ask how much you should lean back, and quite correctly, because how do we know how much? Let me prove you that you already know the answer for this. Think of a downwind skier coming down the slope full speed and edging it really hard. His shoulder is down in the ground almost. Have you ever wondered why this person can do such an aggressive curve? Imagine doing the same thing with like low speed and he would put like so much body weight on one side. He would just simply fall, right? So the key element is speed. Once you're up and riding, kite is at 45 and you have a decent speed, your bar must be in. And that's the moment when you should start leaning back. And if you do it right and on the right time, well, you will feel increasing power since you loaded that line that were already pulling you and you start to pull the kite towards the direction you want it to go. If you feel you're accelerating, just ease the bar out and lean back even more. Well, from here, that's a game. Basically, how much you're leaning back, how much speed you have, and how much power you have in the kite. If your speed is good, the more you sheet out, the more the kite allows you to go upwind against the wind. And the more you sheet in, the more it's gonna pull you down. In the beginning, we don't feel like who creates more tension. 
and then the power drops and your speed drops and you feel it's not pulling you anymore, then instead of moving the kite, you start leaning back to recreate the tension, which is a right thinking, but in this case, it's just going to drop your speed to zero and you will sit back into the water. First, you have to drop in. Think of a skier, it has to drop into the mountain, get the speed and then can put the curve. The same applies to us as well. Unless you're mega powered and it's pumping wind, generally in light wind this is crucial. Drop in, follow the kite slightly, build up speed and then edge gradually. And if you feel this sudden power drop or pull drop and speed drop, well immediately send the kite nice and deep up and then down to regain the lacking power. I bring you some extra tips. Let's say you're riding pretty good, we're going to the left, you're leaning back, you feel the increasing power, you ease the bar out, slide your hands completely together, like into the center. Once you're able to stabilize the kite, it's better to ride like this. And you get the front hand off the bar. Back hand can hold the center lines in between the fingers and try to just take off this hand. All you need to do if you feel the speed drops, you pull the bar in, you come up on the board a bit, and you drop in, you feel the speed increases, you go back and you play with this. If that's cool, you can hang this hand. If you can still maintain the kite position, cool, you can go for the water. Once you're getting comfortable riding upwind, well, it's time to get off the toilet. We often ride in this position just to, you know, lean back and we feel that our butt is leaning back most of the time. But actually, just increasing the force arm and extending our body long, we can create much more leaning back effect. To try to extend your hips forward and throw your shoulders behind the hook. I give you this practice, so if you try to do this once you're riding semi-upwind, that will just solidify all the skill. Try to speed up, and once you have like a decent speed, so you pull the bar, you lean back less, you follow the kite, edge it out, push the bar away and lose that speed. Before the speed drops completely, pull the bar in, in case needed, work the kite, drop downwind and regain the speed. In this case, either the kite creates tension or you create it with the current speed that you just achieved. You do this kind of S-curve a couple of times, you will really get a good feeling of how to do it. And yeah, you will be becoming a good upwind rider. Well guys, I think that's it for today. Hope it helped, hope it makes sense. And yeah, if you're keen to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, you will find the place where I am right now in the description. Until then, enjoy the power zone. Cheers, guys. <laughs>